What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday once again to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. Starting off today with some news. Mayor Tashara Jones of St. Louis has tested positive for COVID after taking a COVID test out of abundance of caution after returning from a conference in Baltimore on Tuesday. You may be surprised to know that this is not her first case of COVID. I actually have written here on a sticky note that this is her second case of COVID. Her first case was back on June 2nd of 2022. So once again, that is the St. Louis Mayor Tashar Jones. I'll be adding that to the archive on my website, datareport.info, just a little bit later. Second of all, we do have this out of Indonesia. There are reports that there are seven active cases of MPOX. This is reported by the Ministry of Health. And we do know that there have been random cases popping up around the world and in the United States. Just yesterday when we were doing the pandemic update, we came across one in California from just earlier this month. All right, yesterday we did do a poll question. Do you think healthcare in the U.S. is too expensive? I thought we would have gotten more votes with this, but, you know, with X dash Twitter being the way X dash Twitter is anymore, it didn't hit the algorithm. I don't know what the deal was, but we only got 269 votes. But the point was made. 98.1% said yes, healthcare is too expensive, and just 1.9% said no. And I don't know who those 1.9% are, but. Really, you don't think healthcare is too expensive in this country? I certainly do. Let's take a look at air qualities across the country for today, and you're going to see a mixed picture here, where it's not as good as it was. Okay, the southeast, you're seeing a lot of green, that's okay, but a lot of yellow from uh, Texas on up through Missouri, Chicago, even some orange and reds showing up, and even up into Canada, some yellows. Then there's, again, a little bit of green in the southeast. Taking a look out on the west coast, we still have some yellows, oranges, even a couple reds and purples. That's not good. And then there is some green mixed in, but California, there's still a fire issue going on, and this is causing there to be poor air qualities. Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, for the most part, okay. Denver, Colorado, we are seeing some, wow, look at these poor air qualities. Someone let me know if there's any fires going on there. I'm going to have to do some uh, due diligence and do some uh, searching on this. If I find anything, I'll tweet it out on Twitter. And Blue Sky, don't forget that, I am on Blue Sky now, at Data Report. Uh, Washington State, there's still a little bit of poor air qualities there as well. Taking a look at heat-related illnesses, as noted yesterday, we are going to continue showing this for a few more weeks, as there have been, yet again, some more heat outbreaks. There's going to be a little bit of heat coming into the east, mid-80s, uh, perhaps maybe some record high temperatures that could lead to heat illness at this time of year. And plus, we have seen a big increase in heat related illnesses in Southern California and portions of Arizona. Walgreens this week, the national positivity rate for Walgreens this week did rise just a little bit 26.4 percent the prior week was 25.8 percent difference of up 0.7 percent total test 11,616 the prior week was 11,593 let's take a look at a couple of those waste water sites norovirus around the country is high uh, covid is medium everything else is low at this time and today why don't we come up here to Michigan. Why don't we come close to Detroit? How about Warren, Michigan? What's going on there? Warren, Michigan it has high levels of COVID at this time, and if we look at the most recent update, it did go upward yet again. Influenza starting to show up in October. Still low. There's been a couple instances of it. RSV not really an issue now. Again, something else that you know, it started to become detected, but now it's back down to zero. HMPV is low, MPOX is low, and norovirus, wow, 
really starting to rise for norovirus at this time. Let's do another wastewater site. Why don't we come down to why don't we come down to Atlanta and see what's going on in the Atlanta metro area? Let's take a look at Clayton this time. I'm seeing high for RSV. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, COVID is low and dropping. Influenza again. It was starting to be detected earlier this month. It's back down to zero. RSV is high, although on the most recent update, it did drop. HMPV is low at this time. Mpox is low. And norovirus is dropping, but it is still in the medium category at this time. Let's go a little bit further west. Can we come out here to Utah? I think we can. How about Salt Lake City, Utah? Let's do that. Then we're going to move on to Hubbub Data, Hubbub World and their data. COVID is at medium, but yeah, look at this. It's rapidly rising. That's not good. Influenza is low. RSV, it's low, but at this time, RSV is starting to rise. HMPV is not an issue at this time. Mbox, not an issue. Norovirus is low, but rising. Should this continue, norovirus would go into the medium category. Let's take a look at Hubbub World and their data. I thought we would start off today with New York State and see what's going on there. And you can see there is very high prevalence of COVID in the New York City metro area. Now, for those who are new to following my channel, maybe you haven't seen me show this product before or this data before on the channel. What this means is it's an area, I'm going to read this right from their website, Area Index estimates the number of contagious persons living within a five-minute walk in your area. So, yeah, it's off the charts. It's in the, slightly in the hundreds in New York City at this time. So, uh, that's not good. Please, mask up if you are in New York City. You know, these lovely N95 or better masks. You know, I showed this all the time and it's really important that you do that because there's a high chance right now i mean look at this map there's a high chance you could come in contact with someone who has covid if you're in new york city let's go through flu flu at this time it's starting to rise a little bit in new york city there's some color there but we've been seeing that for some time rsv at this time is also there's some color for that in terms of local prevalence highest in new york city and the rest of the state's not doing too bad although for COVID, we do see upstate New York, some high levels, even higher back towards Buffalo and Syracuse area, Rochester. So that's not uh, good, particularly good to see. Let's, how about we go down to Florida, shall we? What's going on there? And we do know Florida right now. Florida's not really rising at the moment. Uh, we do see things, it looks like things are stabilizing in Florida because after all, with the winter wave, we expect to see the north rise first then the south and right now florida is, is not doing all that bad there are still some high areas miami of course then you come here to tampa then you come over to orlando and those areas jacksonville but florida it's kind of dropping right now it's lower than what it was uh, back in september flu at this time surprisingly flu is not bad and i'm noticing that as a theme in a lot of places as of right now, flu across the country, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's safe to say this, it's not having as fast of a start as it did last year. Remember last year, flu just went rapidly accelerated upward, it's a little bit less, of, or a little bit slower. However, RSV in Florida, this is the RSV map, yeah, this doesn't look uh, terrible too good uh, really high along the i-95 corridor of florida here and even along the i-75 corridor yeah you want to pay particularly close uh careful that's what the word that i'm looking for you want to pay be careful because the the rsv levels are not so great right now in florida uh moving on uh, actually, let's come over to this now. This is from Hubbub World themselves. They tweeted this on Twitter. It's the California forecast. And it says, prevalence is very high in all metros with trends indicating the start of the winter wave. San Francisco at up to 205 area. Wow, that's, that's bad. Uh, Sacramento, 31 infectious people within a five-minute area. Los Angeles is dropping a little bit. 128 area. San Diego is at 92. Let's go back to their website for a moment. And let's take a look at Illinois now, shall we? 
what is going on in the Chicago metro area. Well, we can see moderate levels of RSV in Chicago. Flu at this time is still low. Uh, COVID is highest right around metro Chicago at this time. Alrighty, moving on. We may take a look at some more of this data again, perhaps maybe tomorrow. Let's take a look now at some CDC data. EG.5 is the leading variant at this time at 23.6%. HV.1 also at 19.5%. FL151 is at 13.5%. And XVB116.6 at 10.3%. We will get a new update on this data, hopefully on Friday. I don't know if it's going to include any new variants, and quite frankly, there's already... A, a numerous number of variants here. I think it's over 20 now. That means there's a whole bunch of them that are just below 1%. That almost makes up half the variants. But we are watching to see what happens with BA 2.86 and this new JN.1, which some say could become a dominating variant in mid-December. And if that's the case, poor timing, because the holidays are just around the corner. COVID hospital admissions for the past week, 16,158. Again, I think this is going to update on Friday as well. And now taking a look at New Jersey. New Jersey, they kind of corrected themselves, but I don't know what's going on here, why the numbers are constantly always uh, changing with New Jersey. They're constantly correcting the numbers. But it looks like New Jersey is down to 483 hospitalizations, which would make much more sense than the 100-some number that they reported yesterday out of random. On the ventilator, 19. And then when you look at the ICU, uh, 57 people in the ICU. So again, much higher than the number we saw yesterday. Discharges at this time are at 70. Moving on now to Pennsylvania, specifically Philadelphia. And the total EMS calls for Philadelphia on Tuesday was 741. I don't know what's going on in Philadelphia today, but the suburbs of Philadelphia, Montgomery County, Chester County, I can't show you a CAD for Bucks County, which is just north of Philadelphia, you know, Washington's Crossing, uh, Doylestown, that's, that's Bucks County, Pennsylvania. However, Montgomery and Chester County have just been insanity today. And I wanted to show you this. This is from just a little bit earlier. I posted this on Twitter. Yes, there were a heck of a lot of calls around 3 o'clock. That was Montgomery County. Here's Chester County. I mean, you can see here, a scroll bar actually popped up on the CAD page, which that's never a good thing. Now let's do a live look. And has it gotten any better? Um, no, Montgomery County is still really busy at this time not as busy as it was but still really busy i'm seeing cardiac emergency cardiac arrest respiratory emergency respiratory emergency syncopal episode abdominal pains uh diabetic stuff i mean it just goes on and on and on and finally taking a look at chester county again a bit better than what it was earlier but overall it's just been a very busy day in the burbs We'll have to see if Philadelphia follows when we get the report on Philadelphia tomorrow. 900 people have tested positive in the last 24 hours in New York State. That's what we find when we take our trip up the New Jersey Turnpike. And when we go to check out the hospital situation in New York State, we can see that hospitalizations, they're down slightly from yesterday. But again, remember, this week they started off a little bit higher than they ended last week. So that's something... We will have to keep an eye on today's number is 1,333 hospitalizations in New York State. And since we have not done it in a while, let's take a look at New York City while we're at it, too. And taking a look at New York City, we do find that their hospitalizations as well are slightly lower than the number that was reported yesterday. And that number is 490. I can no longer show you the number of people in the ICU in New York State or at least not on this data set. I have no clue why, because ICU represents more severe cases. I guess they want to hide the more severe cases. I honestly don't know. All right, now I have to move myself to the left so you can see this week's numbers out of Texas. Kind of a mixed situation when we take a look at Texas. You may see here, oh, cases dropped by 944. That indeed they did. 9,144 new cases. Previous week was 10,088. However, that does uh, change a little bit. Let's, let's give you a slightly more good news first. Deaths are down, 22. 
down by 22, 52 versus 74. But here's where things get a little interesting and not so good. Hospitalizations actually did rise slightly by 35 to 1,033 versus 998. That could signal one thing. We don't know if it's actually the case or not. That could signal that maybe testing was way down and that perhaps they're not testing enough and this drop in cases really isn't the case because of testing. Because after all, hospitalizations did rise. Don't know, it's just a speculation. All right, let's take a look at some international data. Actually, first, no, let's see if Colorado update. We've been waiting on Colorado all afternoon. No, no update from Colorado yet, but the most recent update showed 209 people in the hospital. Maybe we'll get the update out of Colorado tomorrow. All right, taking a look at some international data. Moving myself to the right, and this as well does get a little bit of interesting. Because Brazil this week reports 47,099 cases versus 8,695. That's a 442% increase. That is not good. Deaths are also up 90%. 255 versus 134. Russia, cases up 18%. Deaths up 16%. Germany, cases now up 10%. Deaths up 35%, 196 versus 145. That's a big increase in deaths. Italy, cases down 87%, and deaths also down 87%. Then we come down here to Bulgaria, cases down 4%. Deaths, however, are up 50%, 21 versus 14. Malaysia, cases are up 8%. And two deaths versus two deaths. That's flat over last week. And then finally ending this week, or ending today on Thailand. Thailand cases are up 54%. And deaths are three versus three. That is flat. Alrighty, my friends, that does it for today's pandemic update. We'll have another pandemic update again tomorrow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone that needs to see this content, because maybe perhaps they thought the pandemic was over, which we all know it's not, the winter wave is coming, by all means, share this with them. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. Have a fantastic Wednesday evening, and thanks for watching.